The anime begins with the protagonist of this story named Takio Guda, a young third-year high school student who possesses a big heart. On the last day of classes and graduation day, all the students bid farewell to the boy as he is much loved among them. However, at that moment, he is only interested in confessing his feelings to his fellow student council member, Satu. But upon finding her, he discovers that she is confessing her feelings to Sonakoa Makoto, a handsome high school student and the protagonist's best friend. However, Sonakoa rejects her, leaving the protagonist in shock. Later, on his way home with his friend, Takio remembers that all the girls he liked since childhood were not interested in him but in Sonakawa. Yet, Sonakawa rejected all of them. They have been friends since childhood as they are neighbors, and their mothers are friends, so they spent time together playing despite having different tastes. While traveling on the train, Sonakawa stands up to give his seat to a woman with a baby, leaving her impressed with him. Upon seeing this, the protagonist tries to do the same when an elderly woman enters the train, but she simply ignores him and sits elsewhere, leaving the young man distressed. Meanwhile, a man a few meters away from them was bothering a student. Upon realizing this, Takio runs over annoyed and quickly grabs the man's arm. However, when he turns his gaze, he sees the student thanking him for helping her and he is captivated by her beauty. Later, the students decide to take the offender to the station authorities. But after the man says something indecent to the girl, Takio gets so angry that he ends up hitting him in front of the security guards, leading to the high school's administrators, expelling him for wearing the school uniform. Just then, Suna arrives, bringing him some notes and reproaching him for what he did at the train station as he now cannot go back to classes. At that moment, the doorbell rings, and his mother enters the room to tell him that a girl named Rinko Yamato came to visit him. But then he realizes that she's the girl from the station, causing Takio to blush. Seeing this, his friend decides to leave. However, Rinko stops him from leaving as she brought a cake as a token of gratitude. The protagonist is somewhat disappointed because once again the girl he likes seems to be in love with his friend, but he still accepts the gift, being fascinated by how delicious it is. Once they finish eating, Suna decides to leave and the girl goes with him, leaving the protagonist heartbroken. But at least he received a gift, thinking that would be the end of the story. However, he later hears a phone ringing and answers it, finding Rinko on the other end, asking to meet up to return the cell phone she forgot. The next day, the protagonist goes to meet Rinko, but brings Suno along, thinking she would like to see him. The girl was already waiting for them at the agreed-upon place and once again brought a gift of gratitude for the trouble caused. Then they sit down to enjoy the Macarons, and once again, Takio is fascinated by the food, causing the girl to blush as she says she made it herself. Suna starts asking her about the same high school, to which the protagonist is amazed as the girl responds with some enthusiasm. He decides to go to the bathroom to think for a moment about the situation. Although he likes the girl, he decides to help her conquer his friend. However, he returns soaked from the water. Rinko starts drying him off as best she can, as he is very tall. But Takio asks her to meet again to try another delicious dessert, although it's really to help her. The girl, unaware of his intentions, gets excited and accepts the invitation, leaving the place very happy. On their way home, Suna comments that the girl isn't bad at all, leaving Takio surprised as it's the first time he says something good about a girl. At that moment, Rinko arrives, sweating as she ran to them just to ask for the protagonist's email. After Takio gives her his email and a handkerchief to dry off, the student is very happy and can finally go home peacefully, while the young man is determined to help the girl conquer Suna. It's a new day, and when the protagonist is in classes, he receives a message from Rinko wishing him a good day, causing him to blush. But then he comes to his senses because he decided to help her and his friend so that their relationship can move forward. Takio realizes that since he met his friend, he never talked about girls, so he doesn't know what kind of girls he likes. He decides to visit him and starts asking him a lot of questions, leaving Suna unsure how to respond. Takio remarks that he's someone hard to understand, but his friend counters that unlike him. Takio is easy to figure out because he likes girls who are kind, cute, and those with whom he has a chance. Hearing this, Takio asks his friend to go for a walk, and they end up at a huge treaty with a strange figure. There, the protagonist asks his friend if he has a girlfriend to which he responds negatively, as he finds the idea exhausting. Gauda is surprised by his answer, but then he thinks that maybe he's not interested in girls, yet it's not true because he is interested, it just exhausts him. So Tekio suggests if they tire him, he should just hire them instead of trying to woo them, but Suna believes it's not something he can avoid, although he still agrees with his friend. The next day during class, the protagonist receives an email from Rinko informing him that she has already prepared this soccer tort and asking if they can meet. Takio is surprised by the colorful message but accepts the invitation anyway. They agree to start calling each other by their names, but the young man still believes that all this is because she wants to get closer to his friend. Therefore, in the meeting he's going to have with the girl, he decides to bring his friend along. 
When they arrive, Yamato is surprised to see Suna, but they settle in the park to eat the soccer tour together. Takeo can't hide that he loves the girl's preparations too much, while his friend tells him that if he keeps eating and exercising at the same time, he'll end up looking like a sumo wrestler. However, Suna decides to go buy some drinks with the intention of leaving them alone. But Takeo starts telling Rinko that his friend is a good guy trying to help Suna, but she doesn't seem to care much. When they're saying goodbye, Takeo pushes his friend to give Yamato his email to stay in touch. Meanwhile, she tells the protagonist that they should meet again, and she'll prepare something delicious once more. As the student walks away a bit, Takeo shouts to say goodbye until they meet again. At that moment, a huge iron column is about to fall on her. The protagonist runs at full speed to stop the structure, with Suna running behind him to protect Yamato. Seeing that the young man stopped the structure, they both come out from under it. Takeo realizes they're together and begins to think that he always remains in the background because even if he manages to save her, he'll never be seen as a knight in shining armor. But he feels satisfied that Rinko is safe. Suddenly, Sume and Yamato are behind him helping him hold the column. So Takeo gains more strength and pulls the column to one side. Rinko notices that the young man is injured, so she takes advantage and puts it on him, leaving Takeo in love. During the walk, he had been acting like a sleepwalker, not knowing where he was going or what he was doing until Suna makes him react with the girl's name. That night, Yamato calls Tekio to ask him to meet up over the weekend, but this time without Suna. The young man tries to stick to his promise, thinking that maybe she asked him to meet without his friend to seek help with him. After a few days, the protagonist meets with Rinko again as they agreed, and this time the girl brought savory cookies for his friend along with some tea, as Suna mentioned it's a good accompaniment. Tekio seizes the opportunity and starts talking about his friend and what a good person he is. Despite his feelings, he thinks he's doing a great job helping both of them progress in their relationship because he just wants to see his friends happy. However, he notices that the girl is crying so he doesn't understand what's going on and asks her why she's crying. She excuses herself, saying something got in her eye, and then hastily says goodbye, leaving Takio puzzled. Immediately, the protagonist goes to visit his friend to confront him about making Yamato so emotional by mentioning him. Suna denies having talked to her but reveals that she is in love with Takio. The young man can't believe it, thinking it's impossible, but Sunakoa starts telling him that the time they met in the park to return her phone, she began asking questions about his friend to see if he was in a relationship. Finding out he was single made her happy as she thought she had a chance. So Tekio asks if he thought she was a great girl, to which Suna replies that it was because for the first time a girl wasn't talking behind his friend's back about how he looks physically. The protagonist realizes that his friend rejected all those girls because he was just being a good friend and wouldn't be with someone who spoke ill of him. However, the protagonist still doesn't believe this confession, but at that moment, Rinko arrives to visit Suna. So Takeo hides under the bed, even though it's not big enough to fit him. The girl starts telling Sunakawa that she thinks his friend likes her since he always mentions him, so she immediately blurts out that she likes Takeo. Suna asks her a couple of times to shout that she likes his friend, then goes to the bed to ask his friend to come out of hiding since he heard the girl's confession with his own ears, but also to confess his own feelings. Takeo and Yamato declare that they have liked each other since the day they met on the train. The next day, the protagonist is already in a relationship with Yamato, so they both bring a cake as a gift to thank Suna for helping them be together. Later, Takeo tells his friend that what he did reminds him of the story of the red and blue ogre they used to enact when they were kids, but Suna doesn't seem to remember. Intrigued by Rinko, the young man begins to recount that the story was about how the blue ogre sacrificed his friendship with the red ogre so that he could be happy the way he always wanted, alongside the townspeople who were always afraid of him. In the end, thanks to the Blue Ogre, everyone accepted the Red Ogre. This story moves the girl to tears as well as Takeo, but Suna says that it's normal when wanting the happiness of a friend, so the protagonist hugs Sunakoa tightly, realizing he always looked out for him without realizing it. It's a new day and Suna is on his way to class. On the train, a group of girls talk about how handsome he is and whether they should talk to him. Meanwhile, on the same train, Takeo is also present and a group of guys talk about how big and strong he looks wishing to be like him. As they get off, the friends realize they've been traveling together without noticing. Later, they encounter a tired lady struggling to climb the stairs with a baby carriage. Without hesitation, Takeo takes the baby carriage and starts climbing with it, startling the lady. Suna intervenes, explaining that he's just trying to help her. The grateful lady thanks the handsome guy for his help but not the large student. However, Yamato witnessed everything and praises her boyfriend for his actions. She takes the opportunity to give him the cookies she made, this time for him. As they are about to say goodbye, Rinko asks them to take a photo together as she wants to set it as her wallpaper. Nervously, Takeo doesn't know what expression to make while Rinko's hands tremble, resulting in a poorly taken photo. 
With another attempt, they managed to take a nice couple photo. At that moment, Yamato's friends call her, asking to arrange a group date to meet her boyfriend and his friends, which they agree to after asking the young man. The next day in class, the protagonist announces to his classmates that he has a girlfriend, and all of his friends get excited and congratulate him. He also asks one of them to accompany him on a group date, and everyone tries to be chosen. He also asks Suna to go, saying that they are his girlfriend's friends and are likely to be as nice as she is. However, Sunako responds that just because they are her friends doesn't mean they are good people. Later, when the groups meet, Yamato introduces her friends to her boyfriend, leaving them all stunned as she boasted a lot about him expecting someone different. Once they are at the restaurant, all the girls fall in love with Sunakawa, despite him being quiet in the corner of the table. On the other side, the other guys congratulate Tekio, because his girlfriend is great and because of how strong he is, but the girls don't understand why they like him. Later, two of the girls go to the bathroom, but after some time, Ringo gets worried as they haven't returned. So she and her boyfriend go to look for them, but stop on the way upon hearing the girls talking about how Tekio looks like a gorilla and not understanding how their friend can be with him as he doesn't seem human. They try to apologize, but she tells them that her boyfriend is great and runs off. Tekio follows her until he stops her outside the restaurant. She apologizes for what her friend said, thinking they might have hurt him. However, he replies that he doesn't care at all because there are all kinds of people and thanks to that, he got to know her. She confesses that she really likes him a lot, but then she realizes that maybe she didn't explain well to her friends how great he is. So they return to the restaurant determined to tell them everything. But as they are outside, there is a big explosion in the restaurant and the people inside start coming out, including the boys who were with them. Suna tells them that two girls are still inside, so Takeo doesn't hesitate to pour a bucket of water over himself and quickly enters the place. First, he finds one of them who, upon coming out, says she felt like a big animal carried her. But when he is rescuing the second girl, a part of the roof collapses and he manages to stop it. But he still asks the girl to leave the place, leaving him inside as debris starts falling on him without energy to get out of the place, thinking he could live the last few happy days thanks to Yamato. But at that moment, he receives a call from Suna, who tells him that his girlfriend is desperate and trying to enter to rescue him, but also confesses that he doesn't want to stay in a world without him as it would be boring. The young man gathers strength and jumps out the window, staying safe. Yamato feels relieved to see her boyfriend out of danger. However, the girls approach him to thank him for saving them. Tekio just smiles at them, leaving the girls blushing as they feel confused because he's not their type. As the boys say goodbye, Yamato tries to explain to her friends how great her boyfriend is. The next day, the protagonist manages to scare off three troublemaking youths on the train, but from a distance, he sees Yamato calling him. So he approaches her, and she's happy to see him as it's the first time they've met there. Later, in class, one of the protagonist's classmates who arrives late to class posts a video where Tekio is seen helping Rinko get off the train, but unfortunately, he couldn't get out himself. All the boys think he's admirable for helping his girlfriend while the girls start chatting, saying it's impossible that they are a couple because she's too pretty for him. After class, Tekio watches the video with Suna, but then they hear desperate screams. Upon arriving at the scene, a mother asks for help as her son fell into the water. The protagonist immediately jumps into the water and swims to rescue the boy. When he reaches the shore, Suna holds onto the boy and hands him over to his mother, who thanks the boy for saving him. However, he replies that his friend deserves the thanks, but Takeo doesn't pay much attention and runs off as he was late for his date with his girlfriend. Upon arriving, Yamato notices that he's soaked, so the boys tell her that he rescued a child on the way and to prevent him from getting sick, his friend lent him his sportswear. In the evening, Suna leaves to leave the couple alone, so the girl asks the protagonist to take a walk on the other side of the park to enjoy the stars. But then she realizes they are alone in the darkness, and after Takeo doesn't understand what she's saying, he replies that she shouldn't worry as he has no other intentions with her and just wants to take care of her. When he walks her home, the girl feels somewhat disheartened. Meanwhile, Sanakawa arrives home and he's greeted by his older sister named A, who returned after working for some time and gives him a welcome gift. However, she also tells him to call Takeo to invite him to dinner. Nevertheless, the young man responds that it won't be possible as his friend is spending time with his girlfriend. This surprises the woman and she starts crying, confessing that she always had feelings for him. She asks Suna to introduce her to the girl to know what kind of young woman she is since, according to her, no one else can have feelings for him besides her. Meanwhile, Yamato is at home thinking about what happened and decides to send her boyfriend a message to confess something. But she regrets it and asks him to meet again as she'll prepare cookies, to which he agrees without any problems. The next day, the protagonist and his friend head to meet Yamato, but Suna doesn't understand why he has to go to the meeting. So Takeo explains that when he's alone with his girlfriend, she tends to feel nervous, so if he's with his friend, she won't feel that way. 
Meanwhile, Ai is following them to meet the girl, so she arrives at the park and begins to find out who the protagonist's girlfriend is. The protagonist introduces the girls and in whispers, his girlfriend tells him that the woman is very beautiful. So he tells her that she used to make him nervous because of her beauty, but still she took care of him and like his friend, she has a big heart. Ai without fear asks Yamato what she likes most about the young man, to which she can't explain, but she makes it clear that she likes him. However, she interrupts the conversation to say that she brought the cookies, so they sit down to try them. Unfortunately, the girl confused sugar with salt, so the cookies turned out salty. Immediately, she takes the box and apologizes, asking her boyfriend not to eat them, but he tells her that he doesn't care how they turned out as he'll eat them anyway, leaving both girls blushing. And when they say goodbye, she tells her brother that she's hiding something, so she might be cheating on Takio. When the protagonist accompanies his girlfriend home, she tries to tell him something, but she regrets it again and simply says goodbye to him. Takio is left in doubt, so he goes out to find out what might be happening. The next morning, Ai keeps insisting that Yamato is hiding something, but then she finds Takio in a store reading girls' magazines, so he tells her that he's trying to find out what might be wrong with his girlfriend. So she says that she might be cheating on him, or maybe she already found someone else, but he wouldn't care as he just doesn't want to see her sad. So the woman decides to help him by asking Yamato what's wrong with her since she might find it easier to tell a woman. After what happened, Ai is certain that Yamato is hiding something from Takio, so she decided to help them because she doesn't like seeing the young man worry. The next day, Ai goes to pick up her brother at the high school and everyone is amazed by her beauty. She asks her brother to come out without letting Takio know she's there, but the protagonist is busy reading girls' manga to understand what's happening with his girlfriend. Later, Suna and his sister visit Yamato at her school, and then they take her to a park to explain what's going on. Yamato starts by saying that her boyfriend thinks she's pure, which isn't true. Ai realizes she was right to think she's cheating on him, but the student begins to talk about how she likes Takio, his skin, eyebrows, arms, torso, hands, and even his lips, as they seem very soft. Ai agrees with everything the girl says, adding compliments to them. Finally, Yamato says that when she's with him, she has impure thoughts, but he told her he wouldn't touch her until she grew up. Ai tries to reason with her, saying that he wouldn't do such a thing because he only cares about her well-being. Hearing this, Yamato decides to go find her boyfriend and tell him everything. When the girl leaves, Suna asks his sister what she likes about Taekyo. She recounts that when they were kids in high school, their classmates tease her, saying she looked like a thin statue, which made her lose her confidence. But along the way, she encountered Taekyo, who told her she resembled tulips, and from that moment, she fell in love with him. However, due to the age difference, she never confessed her feelings. Later, the siblings walk home, but they encounter Tenkyo, who was climbing a tree to rescue a cat that couldn't come down. They take advantage of the situation to tell him that Yamato was going to his house to look for him, so immediately the young man rushes off to find her. Ai starts to feel jealous because she would like to be in the student's place, while the protagonist, after running at full speed, finds his girlfriend. He asks her to tell him everything that's been happening because he wants to see her smile. So she confesses that she wants to hold his hand and hug him, regretting not being as pure a girl as he imagined. Immediately, Takio takes her hand, even though he doesn't know what he's doing, but then they decide to walk together hand in hand. On the way, she admits that she lied to him because when she visited his house for the first time, she told him she found his address through the train station, but she actually went to his school to ask and then purposely forgot her phone because she wanted to keep seeing him. He thanks her, saying he's happy for her, and Yamato feels relieved because she was afraid he would leave her for telling the truth. That night, Ai decides to leave because she sees that Takio is happy and doesn't want him to see her in that state. Meanwhile, the protagonist visits Suna to ask him a favor because after talking to his girlfriend, he decided to move forward and make her happy. The young man asks him to help him practice kissing Yamato. Suna is frozen by the request and refuses to help him, but Takio brought a transparent paper to protect himself and grabs his friend against the wall and covers him with that paper. Suna tries to get out, but it's impossible for him because his friend's strength overpowers him. It's a new day and the protagonist is going to meet his girlfriend accompanied by Suna. When they arrive and the couple is about to greet each other, two big men emerge from the bushes because they were looking for Takio. These guys are members of the judo club and are there to ask him to help them win a match instead of their leader. He accepts without any problem because he likes helping others, but on the way, Suna tells him that by accepting, he will have to stop seeing Yamato for a month as he will have to train. Both of them get sentimental, but she tells him not to worry about her because she's excited to see him compete. Nevertheless, he asks her to call him if she wants to see him and he'll come as quickly as possible. The next day, the protagonist starts his training with all his attitude, and due to his strength and physical aptitude, he defeats all the members of the judo club he trains with, always thinking about his girlfriend and the thought of seeing her again. 
That night, Yamato appears outside his house to bring him some rice balls. But due to the hour, the young man decides to accompany her home. Several days pass, and Yamato visits Sunakawa to bring him cookies she made thinking of Takio, but the young man asks her why she doesn't take them to her boyfriend. She responds that he asked her not to visit him so she thinks maybe he's upset, but Suna tells her she's misunderstanding everything because his friend is not that kind of guy. Yamato realizes she's overthinking nonsensical things, but it's because Takio is her first love and every time she sees him, she feels a lot of things, to which Sunakawa says he feels the same because the protagonist is his first friend, and they've known each other for years. After a long day of training, the protagonist misses his girlfriend because he spent a month without seeing her, so he sends a message to Yamato to call her. She calls him instantly, and he tells her he just wanted to hear her voice, so she nervously starts talking and telling things so he can hear her. The next day is the match and Suna and Yamato went to cheer for Taikyo, so when he sees them, he takes his girlfriend's hand to take her to the pavilion to see the competition up close. But an opponent stands in his way because he knows the protagonist and knowing that Taikyo has a girlfriend, he mocks him, saying it's a waste of time. But Taikyo doesn't care because he doesn't think the same. When the match begins, the club members face their opponents, and when they reach the end, they end up tied, so Taikyo and the guy he crossed paths with are in charge of breaking the tie. The opponent feels like he has a good chance of winning, but it's not the case because after a fierce battle, Taikyo ends up winning but still helps his opponent to get up. Later, Yamato and Suna are waiting for their friends who after so much waiting, the couple finally gets to spend time together, and that night they stay with Sunakal, looking at the stars. Following the events above on a new day, the protagonist wakes up after dreaming about a childhood memory with Sunakal. That morning after class, Suna tells Taikyo that he'll go home, so the young man tells him not to hold back because surely his girlfriend prepared something to share among the three. Upon arriving at the park, Yamato realizes that her boyfriend didn't come with his friend, which is strange because they are always together. Nevertheless, she asks them to save some cookies for her have later. Then the girl asks Kekio when his birthday is, as she never asked him before. He tells her it's on January 1st and that his friends used to visit him before. Rinko says she'll start preparing for that date, but then she asks about her birthday, so Yamato says it's on June 15th. When the protagonist realizes it's in a few days, he wants to plan something to celebrate, but she just wants to spend time alone with her boyfriend. Later, the protagonist visits his friend to tell him about Yamato's birthday. Tekio asks him to help plan a perfect day with his girlfriend since she wants them to spend the day alone. He accepts. That afternoon, the protagonist's mother, a large and strong woman, arrives and tells her son that she will become an older sister. Out of excitement, the young man tells his friends about it, and Yamato says he will be a great brother and even a great father in the future. He responds that she will also be a great mother, making them both blush. At that moment, Suna gets up saying he has to leave, but the couple doesn't know what happened. Yamato thinks maybe he feels lonely now that his friend spends more time with her. So the next day, Takio invites his friend to spend Yamato's birthday together, but he doesn't accept, saying he has plans that day. Although the protagonist still believes something is wrong, he won't force him to tell unless he wants to. Later that afternoon, the boys get together to plan the birthday, collecting ideas for the day. But Takio realizes he forgot his girlfriend's gift, so he decides to look for work. The next day, he gets a job at a cafe because of his great physique, but unfortunately, he tells Yamato about it even though he had promised his friend to keep it a secret. After Suna helps the protagonist find the perfect gift for his girlfriend, Takio arrives home and his mother tells him that his friend's father is hospitalized because of heart problems. He rushes to find out it's true. Sunakawa explains that he's alone because his mother went on a trip with Ai, and he's taking care of his father, but the operation is scheduled for June 15th, Yamato's birthday. Tekio immediately says he'll accompany him, but his friend refuses because he had been planning the birthday eagerly and staying by his side won't make him feel better anyway. Nevertheless, the protagonist is still worried about him. The next day, Suna is walking through the city and arrives at the cafe where his friend works. When Takio notices Sunako outside, he immediately comes out to tell him not to worry about him as he will spend the day with his girlfriend. However, the protagonist still feels concerned about his friend, but decides to do his best for Yamato's birthday. After what happened, it's June 15th and Takio is outside the apartment waiting for his friend. When Suno appears, he wishes him luck on his date, while Takio gives him emotional support for his father's operation. The protagonist meets his girlfriend, who arrives worried about being late, but he just wishes her a happy birthday, and then they start doing everything that was planned for that day. First, they go bowling, where Yamato is surprised by how strong Takio is since he can easily lift the bowling ball. Seeing that she likes it, he starts juggling to impress her even more. Then they visit a bakery she wanted to go to, and she is very happy. They stay there to eat something, and Yamato takes the opportunity to ask why Suna doesn't have a partner since he could be very popular among girls. Takio replies with what his friend once told him that it's a nuisance for him, 
but she interrupts, saying she's glad he didn't have a girlfriend either when they met. At that moment, the workers from the bakery come to wish the girl a happy birthday, and they tell her to make a wish. Yamato shouts in front of the people there that she wishes for many more birthdays with Taikyo, but then she realizes it wasn't necessary to shout it. When they leave the place, they walk through the park, and the girl is very happy because she's having a great birthday and thanks Suna since he also helped with everything. Meanwhile, Taikyo, despite enjoying the day, thinks about his friend since he is alone waiting for his father's operation, so he stops for a moment to confess the truth to Yamato. She asks him to go and accompany his friend since he surely wants to be by his side. The young man gives her the program he made with Suna along with some tickets, so she says she will follow everything since both of them made an effort to plan it. Takeo apologizes and rushes to the hospital. When he arrives, Suna looks at him and says he assumed he would come. They both sit down to wait for the operation to end. Takeo says he doesn't know what his friend is thinking or wants to do, but he will always be by his side. Suna tells him that since he was a child, his father has had heart problems and they've been through an operation before, but this time he feels guilty because he deviated from his path on the way back from school and found his father in a bad condition when he got home. Takeo tells him that everything that happened is not his fault, so he should calm down. Then he realizes that his friend did not want to tell him what was happening but couldn't. When the operation finally ends, the doctor comes out and explains to the boys how the process went, but Takeo loses patience and starts shaking the doctor to make him answer if everything went well. At that moment, Suna's family arrives and asks the boys to go back home. Before leaving the hospital, they find Yamato, who says she came because she couldn't stop worrying. And when she finds out everything went well, she is very happy. She also confesses that after looking at the program, she realizes her boyfriend made an effort to change several of his plans just so she could have a good time, so she thanks him with a beautiful smile. Suna was watching them, so when he sees how tender they are without realizing it, he says it seems cute. And immediately the boys hear and start planning a date for him and finding him a girlfriend, believing she should be a girl who resembles Taikyo since he is his best friend, but Suna just wants them to stop because that's not what he wants. Later, the friends go to their quiet place where they've been going since they were kids, and there they watch the sunset, having old childhood memories. It's a new day, and the couple decides to go on a picnic since they couldn't finish enjoying Yamato's birthday. The idea was Tekio's, but he begins to think it was a bad idea because he notices that his girlfriend can't keep up with him since they have to climb the mountain. He starts to think that he should have consulted with Sunakala, because more than a picnic, it seems like a hike. As they climb the protagonist, when they reach the summit, the girl is excited because she's thrilled to have a picnic at the top of the mountain. However, a hawk appears and steals her jacket with the brooch her boyfriend gave her. She chases after it until she manages to retrieve it, but ends up on the edge of the cliff about to fall. The protagonist immediately runs to hold onto her and the backpack, but they both end up falling anyway. Upon hitting the ground, the young couple realizes they don't know where they are, so they're lost and neither of them has a signal to communicate. Meanwhile, Yamato's friends talk about how Takeo is a bit handsome, but they all remember how manly he is, leaving them fascinated. The protagonist's parents think their son is spending time with his friend, but Suna is in his room reading books. Because of what happened, Takeo tells his girlfriend that they'll have to spend the night there since it will take them a while to get back home. Yamato blushes and starts having impure thoughts, but he thinks she's just scared, so he tells her not to worry because he'll take care of everything. At that moment, Yamato's mother calls one of her friends to ask about her daughter, and she and the others, realizing she hasn't returned yet, assume impure things, so they decide to cover for her. However, when they try to contact the girl who spoke with her mother, they can't reach her, so they call one of Takeo's friends to find out where they went, but since they get no response, they decide to end the call. Later, Takeo sets up a camp for Yamato to rest, and as she lies down, the girl gets nervous because it's the first time they're lying down together. However, he distracts her by showing her the stars, and they notice how beautiful it looks since there's no lighting in the area. Yamato still feels nervous, so she starts saying that she doesn't mind staying there forever as long as they're together, imagining a life together with him. But then she turns around and the young man had already fallen asleep, so she takes advantage and leans in to give him a goodnight kiss on the cheek. The next morning, they reach the road and the protagonist's body is covered in mosquito bites because he protected his beloved from them. Then the kids take a bus back home, and there, Yamato receives a message from her friend asking her to come over. So what she does, they all start asking her questions about her night, thinking it was a romantic evening. However, she explains that she was nervous, but her boyfriend made her feel safe, leaving them all excited, thinking it was their first time. Meanwhile, Takeo returns home, but his parents weren't too worried about him. Although at that moment, he receives a message from his girlfriend telling him how much she enjoyed being with him, 
So the protagonist decides to visit Suman and ask him to teach him how to use emojis to express his feelings, since he doesn't know how to do it. Summer vacation arrived, and the couple decides to go to the beach with their friends. Take of his classmates start talking about seeing girls in swimsuits, but immediately the protagonist scolds them, saying they shouldn't talk about that because the beach is only for swimming. Meanwhile, Yamato's friends get excited about seeing Sunakawa, so they decide to go buy swimsuits. At the same time, Rinko starts looking for one for herself, but her friends notice she's trying to show off too much. She says she wants to find a flashy one since Takia will surely look great in his. Before the agreed upon day, the protagonist visits Sunakawa to make sure they have everything they need. At that moment, Yamato calls Tekio to tell him that a typhoon is expected, but he replies that she shouldn't worry because he always brings good weather. The next day, the weather is on their side as it is sunny. The boys arrive at the beach excitedly, and while the boys set up the umbrella and the place where they will stay, the girls are changing, so the boys get excited again. However, Tekio scolds them again, but when the girls come back, the protagonist is completely lost looking at Yamato despite saying he would contain himself. Suna tries to snap him out of it, and Tekio takes off his shirt, leaving his girlfriend blushing. Later, Tekio tries to keep his distance from his girlfriend to not get too excited, so after swimming a bit, they start playing, and the one in charge of starting the game to crush the watermelon blindfolded is Tekio. When Yamato approaches, everyone starts screaming because he could hit her, and when he takes off the blindfold, he sees his girlfriend in a swimsuit and loses his mind for a moment. Thanks to Suna, he comes back to reality and tries to pretend nothing happened. Then they play volleyball, where Takio wins, and after swimming a bit, the girl realizes how popular her boyfriend is. During lunch, she decides to invite him for a walk to try to excite him at least once, but on the beach, she tries to hug him, but accidentally almost destroys a sandcastle that some kids were building. She apologizes and runs away. When Takio tries to go after her, he steps on the sandcastle, so he stays to rebuild it until Suna arrives and asks him to go after her. When Takio reaches Yamato, she apologizes again, saying she only thinks about herself while he looks around. At that moment, there's a sunset, and the protagonist remembers that he wanted to be there with his girlfriend. So, while he watches her play with the water, he confesses his love to her. Yamato blushes and also confesses her feelings, so they stay looking at each other for a few seconds, and the young man approaches her to kiss her, but they are interrupted by the boys who were looking for them. On the way home, Riko suggests to Takio to watch the fireworks at a festival, and he accepts, thinking he will be excited again to see his girlfriend with the fireworks while she wants to try to excite her boyfriend, since she thinks she didn't succeed. It's game day at high school, and the protagonist is the goalkeeper representing his class. Thanks to him, their team won, and the girls approach Suna to congratulate him while Takio thinks how he wishes his girlfriend were there. But at that moment, he receives a message from Yamato saying she'll go ice skating with her friends, so he invites her, but she must bring his friends. When they arrive, everyone is amazed because Takio is very good at skating, and he even looks like a professional skater. He catches the attention of everyone. However, he's always helping his girlfriend, in this case, teaching her to skate since she loses balance and can't do it alone. Afterward, the youngsters talk about studies. The girls say Yamato is very good in her class, and Takio boasts that his friend is a good student while he's close to being the worst. On the way home, Yamato says she's already decided which university to go to, but Takio hasn't decided yet. So she proposes going together to the same university because she wants to spend more time with him and is willing to switch to the university he chooses. However, Takio asks her not to change universities because he'll study hard enough to get into the one she wants to go to. The protagonist tries to study and unable to concentrate, he decides to visit Suma and ask for help. When he tells him he wants to go to Murasaka Fuji University with his girlfriend, Sanakawa is surprised because he thought he would study cooking or pastry making. But he also says it will be impossible for him to enter that university. Still, seeing how determined the young man is, he decides to help him. But then Yamato calls Tekio and proposes going to another university that would be more accessible for both. She says they'll do mock exams to see if they're suitable for the universities they want to apply to. So the young man starts studying with his friend. The next day, the protagonist studies at home with his friend, who tries to keep him focused by repeating Yamato's name. At that moment, the girl arrives at his home and says she heard he was studying, so she decided to bring him some pastries. Tekio's mother stares at her because she's right next to her, so she asks her son to help her prepare tea for the student. When they're in the kitchen, the woman finds out she's Tekio's girlfriend, so she gets excited and runs out to buy finer tea to prepare. The protagonist returns to his room and says his mother found out about his relationship, so Yamato feels relieved as she was very nervous talking to her mother. But they both agree to continue studying on the weekend. The next day, Yamato arrives at the protagonist's house, and to her surprise, the young man's room is tidy because his mother stayed up all night cleaning it since her son has a girlfriend for the first time. But then, the boys decide to study quietly, 
but they're interrupted every two seconds by the student's parents as they try to impress or bond with Yamato. Tired of being bothered, the young man decides to go to Sunakawa's house to concentrate. They spend hours studying, but there comes a point where Takeo falls asleep from studying too much. So Suna leaves the room to prepare tea, and Yamato takes advantage and lies down next to her boyfriend, while telling him that it doesn't matter if they don't go to the same university as long as they're together. At that moment, Suna arrives and seeing that situation, he decides to leave while the girl feels embarrassed. But due to the noise, Takeo wakes up again, but luckily, he didn't hear anything. The next day is the mock exam, so all the students are nervous, but especially the couple who want everything to go well. In the classroom, the exam begins, and the protagonist, with great enthusiasm and knowledge, starts answering the questions. But when he finishes, he realizes he answered them wrong, so he enters a crisis, but he's still determined to correct them. When they finish, their friends notice the young man is exhausted, but still, they encourage him. When they receive the results, it turns out to be impossible for Takio to enter the university, so he becomes and calls his girlfriend to tell her the news. She says they could try going to another university since it was impossible for him to enter Murasaka Fuji University anyway because it's a women's university. Takeo is in shock and looks at Suna, who laughs because he tricked him. It's a new day, and the couple decides to go to the movies but accompanied by Suna, who reluctantly agrees. The guys are happy. During the movie, the protagonist falls asleep, taking up too much space and making Sunakawa uncomfortable. Later, he says he enjoyed the movie, making the couple happy. They also take Sunakawa to enjoy the mountains before letting him rest while they plot something. The guys surprise their friend with a birthday cake and congratulations. Suna is surprised as he didn't expect it but is happy and thanks his friends for remembering. The couple is happy as they consider their plan a success. Later, Yamato and Suna visit Tekio at work, so he asks them to order as he'll pay. Rinko is excited to see her boyfriend working, but even more so by how the uniform fits him, and Tekio wastes no time in showing off. When the protagonist leaves, a handsome boy sits at their table and speaks to Suna, mistaking him for Takio. He heard Takio is very popular in the cafeteria and the owner doesn't want to kick him out, but despite having fans, he'll beat him. Yamato and Suna don't understand what he means, but just then, Takio arrives after hearing them talk about him. The handsome young man gets nervous upon realizing the large, muscular guy is who he's looking for and shows him his business card with his name, Hayato Oda. The guys notice the university attended by Suna's sister is listed on it. She appears very upset to take him away as they know each other. I scolds Oda for interrupting the protagonist's work. He responds that he's in love with her and already confessed his love. He just wanted to meet the guy her girl is in love with, even though he wasn't surprised as he had no idea she liked that kind of guys. But beyond breaking her heart, he wants her to be happy with the girlfriend she has because she's a good girl. He then asks his friend to go home since he had nothing else to do there despite his eagerness to meet his opponent. Meanwhile, Takio and Yamato talk about A's visit. The girl was very happy to see her again as she helped her with her problems, so in return, she says she'll prepare something delicious for her. When Takeo returns home, he looks through magazines for a place to take his girlfriend since he'll receive payment for his work. Finding an amusement park, he decides to call her and invite her, but she refuses and hangs up. The protagonist doesn't understand what happened, so he visits Suna to ask him. Upon entering the room, he finds his friend and I. She apologizes for what happened but the young man tells her he was just defending his friend as he thought he was bothering him. He takes the opportunity to ask her about the problem she's having with her girlfriend, so I decides to help the couple again. The next morning, everyone gathers for breakfast and while the girls talk, I takes the opportunity to ask Yamato why she doesn't want to go to the park with her boyfriend. Very embarrassed, she replies that she doesn't plan to go with him. Just then, Ono appears, leaving Ai stunned as he reveals he's the girl's classmate and despite confessing his feelings, they're not reciprocated as she loves another man who unfortunately already has a girlfriend. He also overheard the conversation the youngsters had, so he realized that Yamato doesn't want to go to the park with her boyfriend because of the saying that if you go on a date, you'll surely break up with your partner. But Oda suggests they all go together so it won't be a date anymore and everyone agrees. Later, Suna asks his sister why she told Oda about Takeo, so she says it was an accident because of hypnosis. As the protagonist heads home, he meets Hayato on the way, who tells him he has nowhere to sleep since he came only to visit Ai. Takeo says he can stay at his house as he wouldn't let him stay anywhere else. As they're about to sleep, Oda confesses that when he met Sonakawa, he was afraid of him. But she was the only girl who helped and scolded him when he lost some documents at university, and he's had feelings for her since then while Takeo remembers he never felt afraid of her. Instead, she was always there to look after him. At that moment, Hayato confesses that he doesn't care if she has feelings for another person. He would accept her anyway. The next morning, I realizes her classmate spent the night with Takeo, so she's upset, 
thinking he might have told the truth to the young man. But Oda tells her he didn't say anything, although he whispers in her ear that he has the idea of separating Taikyo from Yamato for a moment so she can take advantage and confess her feelings to him, and thus be able to move on and move forward. She remains silent, not knowing what to say. After what happened, the group is about to go to the amusement park. When they arrive at the park, the guys get the tickets and head to buy headbands where they see the couple excited. Oda and Suma ask Guy to also buy one, but she refuses. However, when Taikyo asks her, she immediately goes to buy one. Then the guys have fun on the roller coaster, but Hayato can't stop looking at the lovebirds, so later he tries to separate Yamato from her boyfriend. But Ai intervenes, and they end up leaving Suna and his friend alone. Later, Oda tells the protagonist to accompany him to buy something, and when they are alone, he says he would like Ai to confess her feelings, and that the young man knew how she feels so that he can move on. But Takeo gets confused because there might be a chance she'll end up with the other guy, but he says that way he would give up and just forge memories and go back home. When all the guys are having lunch together, Oda spills a hot dog on Ai. And she says she has to go to the bathroom to clean up, so Oda asks Takeo to stay as a reference point while he and the others go to buy popcorn. When the girl returns, she realizes through a message she sent to her partner that she has the opportunity to confess. She immediately invents that they have to look for Yamato as she got lost, so they go looking for her, but the protagonist, seeing that his friend is tired of walking, suggests going for some quiet juices to rest. She remembers her friend's words telling her that if she never confesses, she won't know how he would react and maybe he would stop treating her like an older sister. So she tries to confess when they are on one of the rides but gets embarrassed and doesn't end up saying anything. Meanwhile, Yamato thanks Oda for accompanying them as they wouldn't have been able to go otherwise, then Hayato realizes that his friend isn't responding to the messages, so he assumes that she managed to confess her feelings so worriedly, he runs off to look for them. Ai is in the middle of the crowd with Takeo, and feeling a bit nervous, she tries to confess her feelings but ends up asking him to go look for his girlfriend as she's probably waiting for him to see the next attraction. At that moment, Oda appears, who gets discouraged knowing that he couldn't say anything, but she feels satisfied that he continues to laugh like a fool and treat her like an older sister. Later. Tekio is searching for his girlfriend in the middle of the crowd, and when they manage to find each other, they both run out and share a warm hug before going to watch the show they wanted to see together. But they hear a child complaining that he couldn't see because the young man was in front of him. So the protagonist decides to crouch down and when he looks up, he realizes that he's facing his girlfriend. So they both blush and are about to kiss, but Suna accidentally interrupts them. The next day, Oda is leaving for his home, so he tells A that Takeo told him about seeing her in pajamas when they were kids and how he managed to make him nervous. The girl is embarrassed and excited at the same time as she realizes that she could make the boy she likes nervous, while Oda regrets having told him. In class, the students find out about a sports festival, and Takeo is chosen for the relay race because he's very fast, and they hope to win the competition because of him. Later, the protagonist meets Suna and Yamato. Upon hearing about the sports competition, Yamato realizes her boyfriend is somewhat popular and begins to suspect he's popular with girls. Tekio clarifies to her that he's not popular among girls, although he's good at many sports. When this is cleared up, the girl gives him cookies made by her boyfriend, while he thinks about how cute she is but feels too embarrassed to say it. During training, one of the competitors injures her ankle and is advised not to participate. The team members feel frustrated as the best competitors have already joined other sports, they must choose between two girls who are left without a team. They play rock, paper, scissors, and Seiju Moriyano, the worst one, wins. When practicing, the boys realize that Seiju is very slow, but Takeo doesn't notice because he never paid attention to how others run. Seiju overhears this, and the next day claims to have a stomachache canceling the training. The protagonist uses this time to spend with his girlfriend, and there, Yamato tells him she's very slow at running. Takeo decides to practice with her to see how he could help Seiju. After their date, Takeo encounters Seiju, who confesses that she faked the stomach act but apologizes, feeling misunderstood. Takeo leaves, but when he hears his name, he sees Seiju running after him, confessing she feels like a burden to the team. Takeo reassures her and decides to help her increase her speed, which she accepts. At the next training session, Takeo helps Seiju, but there are no visible results. Takeo tells Yamato that the relay competition will be mixed, making her immediately jealous but he reassures her that he's not popular among girls. On the day of the competition, Sunakawa attracts all the attention. Before the relays, Seiju feels nervous, but seeing Takeo cheering her up calms her down. While running, she trips and falls, leaving her class hopeless. However, Takeo appears, she gives him the baton, and he finishes the race, turning them from last place to winners. When they all gather, she feels drawn to him. Meanwhile, 
Yamato talks to her friends about the competition, feeling insecure that someone might see how great her boyfriend is and fall for him. Her friends suggest proving her status as his girlfriend by buying matching keychains and setting up a meeting in the park. However, Seiju appears, having followed Tekyo. Tekyo introduces them, and despite feeling jealous, Yamato gives her gift once Seiju leaves. Afterwards, Yamato tells her friends what happened, and they're confused because they find it impossible for someone to fall for Takio. Nevertheless, they encourage her to fight for her love. The next day, Rinko waits outside her boyfriend's school, but sees him leaving with Saju on his back. The following day, Yamato visits her boyfriend again, but finds him alone with Saju, who confesses she likes him. Feeling disheartened, Yamato decides to leave but stops when she hears Seiju asking to call in Sensei. Despite feeling unworthy, Takio accepts. When Moriano leaves, Takio notices Yamato and confesses he only wants to be popular for her. After what happened, the protagonist tells his friend that Seiju confessed she likes him as a person, so he doesn't know what to do, especially since she started calling him Sensei, teacher. Meanwhile, Yamato also tells her friends about what she heard the day before. They reassure her, saying they think the same of Takio which makes the girl feel calmer. She takes the opportunity to invite her boyfriend to the university festival. He accepts but also invites Suma and Seiju. However, after the student's confession, Sunakawa suspects the girl's feelings. The next day, the group gathers at the festival and spends time together. However, at one point, the girls are alone, so Miyamoto, in friendly tone, asks Seiju what she likes about her boyfriend, feeling intrigued. Nervously, Seiju responds that he helped her during the relays when everyone else left her alone after she fell, and he was the only one who approached to take the baton. As she recounts the story, she feels excited, while Yamato listens amazed and fascinated by her boyfriend. However, Seiju also feels curious about who asked out whom. Rinko casually tells how they met, and that she confessed first. Later, when Suna and Seiju leave, the couple is alone, so they hold hands and walk together. Takio wonders where the feeling of loving his girlfriend so much comes from. The next day at school, Suna accidentally meets Saju and asks her where the feeling of liking Takio as a person and calling him Sensei comes from. She tries to compare it to the friendship feeling between the boys, but Suna tells her he's sure they have different feelings, so they can't compare. Upset, she leaves, asking him not to tell Takio anything. That afternoon, the protagonist is alone in the classroom waiting for his friend and thinking about how to make his girlfriend understand she shouldn't worry because he's not popular with girls. Seiju appears, having talked to Suna earlier, who said it seemed like she was cheating by pretending not to feel anything towards Takio while trying to get closer. In the classroom, Seiju tells him she likes him as a man. He apologizes, explaining his feelings are not reciprocated as he only loves Yamato. After remembering Yamato's insecurity, he goes to look for her. Later, Yamato is alone in the park crying until Suna appears, trying to comfort her. In the distance, Takio arrives at Yamato's school where he confesses his love and reassures her she's unique to him. So she shouldn't worry about anything, despite telling her about Saiju. She's happy as he made her feel secure and showed he truly loves her. The next day, the protagonist meets Saiju, who greets him with a big smile as if nothing had happened, and asks if she can still call him Sensei. He decides to help her when she finds someone she likes. It's a new day, and a group of young people who are intimidating others talk about an urban legend. A two-meter-tall giant who allegedly almost killed a man in front of the police. Takio approaches them, causing everyone to flee. However, the protagonist was just approaching his girlfriend. It's winter, and Christmas is approaching. Yamato suggests to her boyfriend spending Christmas Eve with their friends, and the next day, he asks them, and they accept without hesitation as they'll be spending the holidays with girls for the first time. Meanwhile, Kurihara, the protagonist's friend, asks for his help to confess to Yamato's friend. The protagonist informs the girls that everyone agreed to spend the holidays together. Nanako approaches her friend to ask if Kurihara will also be there, as they've been on dates and he held her hand. Yamato feels excited and tries to help her friend in any way she can. That afternoon, the couple is at the mall to make a reservation for karaoke, but they notice the huge Christmas tree there. The receptionist tells them that if someone takes the star from the tree and proposes to someone, that person will accept. On their way home, discreetly, they ask about each other's friends to inform their companions. However, Takio ends up revealing that Kurihara is trying to ask Nanako out. They both decide to help them have the chance to be alone. All the friends finally gather at the karaoke enjoying themselves. Later, the couple tries to get the friends to sit together until they succeed, but Yamato seems distant towards Kurihara, even though he asks if she wants a boyfriend, to which she only responds affirmatively, as every girl desires. The boys decide to go and look the tree up close, and Kurihara takes the opportunity to approach Nanako and hold her hand, making her blush. However, he immediately lets go as his friends had talked to him, and he tries to pretend that nothing happened. 
Nevertheless, upon re-entering the room, Nanako stops at the door and asks the boy angrily what he means to her. Nervously, but trying to control the situation, he replies that he only sees her as a friend, leaving her feeling disappointed. When it's time for gifts, the boys have to randomly choose presents, but Yamato and Takio interfere to make Kurihara and Nanako pick each other's gifts. However, she ends up disappointed again. Later, during karaoke, Kurihara asks the girl to sing with him as it's their favorite song. However, halfway through the song, due to its significance, Nanako leaves the microphone in the room, leaving everyone puzzled. Yamato goes after her, but in the hallway, they encounter the rowdy boys they had encountered before, who start bothering the girls. Kurihara comes to the rescue, having gone after his girl at his friend's request, making them run away. While Takia worries about his girlfriend, Nanako yells at Kurihara for not helping at that moment and then runs off. Yamato catches up with her at the door, but Nanako tells her that unfortunately, not everyone can feel the same way about being in love and cuddly as she and her partner do. Upon their return, Yamato and Takio feel guilty for intervening and not being able to bring the couple together, so they decide not to interfere as Suna did with them before. Meanwhile, Sanakawa finds Kurihara on the ground and Yamato and Takio arrive. They see the frustrated boy, who says he couldn't confront them as he's not as strong as his friend. Upon hearing this, the protagonist gets upset and grabs his friend, telling him he must act like a man. While Nanako goes home, she receives a call from Yamato, so she decides to return to the mall and finds Kurihara trying to climb the Christmas tree and grab the star. His friends plead with him to stop as he could hurt himself, but he continues climbing as he didn't have the courage to ask the girl he likes out on a date just because he felt embarrassed. He approaches Nanako and confesses his feelings in front of all their friends and the people in the mall. To their surprise, everyone is excited, so they decide to celebrate the new couple. The next day, Kurihara happily tells his friends how he started liking the girl and Nanako calls him, behaving tenderly with him, surprising her friends as she had never behaved that way before. However, they tease her about how she would act when they have their first kiss. To everyone's surprise, she reveals that it already happened that night when he confessed to her. Yamato hears this and feels overwhelmed as she still hasn't had her first kiss. After what happened, Kurihara tells Taikyo and Sunakawa that he kissed Manaka on Christmas Day. The protagonist gets excited because he thinks they are moving too fast, but then Kurihara leaves to have a date with his girlfriend. When they are alone, Suna asks Takio when would be the right time for him. Takio says it would be in the autumn of the third year of high school, so his friend doesn't understand why he has to wait so long, but Takio just wants to be prepared. That night, Yamato visits Sunakawa, and to her surprise, Ai is also there. Riko talks about not knowing what to prepare for her boyfriend's birthday, so they suggest the idea of a cake. However, she also asks what Takio might think if she kisses him, but then she regrets asking. Suna tells her she should do it because his friend plans to kiss her in the third year. The girl is surprised and feels distressed, but she still says she will wait. Then she asks her friend if he has ever kissed, but that question makes Suna feel uncomfortable. At midnight, Yamato calls Takio to wish him a happy birthday, making him go to sleep content. The next day, the couple meets and Rinko again wishes him a happy birthday and promises to make his birthday unforgettable. Then they spend the afternoon at the temple where they make their wishes, but they also seek their luck. Later, the couple decides to be at Takio's house to finish spending the day. Since the room was messy, they start tidying up, but at one point they accidentally touch hands and stare at each other, but they are interrupted by the young man's mother. However, later, Takio's childhood friends appear, and they spend the afternoon together. Once they leave, Yamato gives her boyfriend the gift and the cake she prepared. As he goes to the kitchen, she gathers courage for the moment. When Takio makes his wishes, she slowly approaches him and gives him a kiss. However, when Takio opens his eyes, he acts as if nothing happened, so she suspects that maybe her boyfriend didn't realize she kissed him, leaving her disappointed. At night, Takio visits his friend and tells him about his day with his girlfriend. At one point, he mentions that when he was making his wishes, an insect landed on his lips and stayed there for a while until he opened his eyes. Suna makes him realize that it was actually Yamato who kissed him. He runs to look for her, and when he arrives at her house, he asks her if it's true that she kissed him, making her embarrassed. But still, he asks her to do it again, so they both approach and share a kiss under the snow, ending with a hub where he promises her that he will be good to her and that he will remember that day forever. After a few days, the couple remembers the day of the kiss and both feel nervous, but Yamada remembers that the day they went to the temple, she bought a childbirth amulet for Takeo's mother. When they arrive at the protagonist's house, his mother sends him on errands while she talks to the girl. There, the woman tells her that she was always calm during Takeo's pregnancy, so she feels better about this one. Yamato tells her that she would like to some baby a strong mother like her and takes the opportunity to give her the amulet, making the woman happy before she goes to the hospital for a checkup. Meanwhile, 
When Rinko and Takio are alone, he tells her that when he was born, he weighed 4 kilograms and was always a strong child. But that wasn't the case for Yamato as she was born prematurely and weighed only 2 kilograms. When Takio's mother is returning, she meets Suna, who helps her with the groceries. She insists that it's not necessary, but he insists. The woman thanks him because Takio has very good friends by his side and hopes that in the future, he will get along well with his brother or sister. In the following days, the protagonist and his father can't do anything as the woman, despite being pregnant, insists on not resting and goes for a walk alone. The man tells his son that the day he met her, he was surprised to see such a strong woman and that he fell in love with her from that day on. He used to invite her on dates until he asked her to be his girlfriend, but he could never protect her because she did it herself. Meanwhile, the woman meets a friend who is also pregnant. When they say goodbye, the friend feels unwell and is about to fall down the stairs. But Takio's mother quickly holds her and saves her. However, at that moment, due to the force exerted, she feels pain in her abdomen but pretends nothing happened. Later, Takio returns home and finds his mother sitting but in pain, so he asks to take her to the hospital. The young man quickly runs to find a taxi but doesn't find any. Luckily, Suna appears to help him, and he accompanies them. When they enter the hospital, the protagonist is very nervous and worried but tries to remain calm. However, his mother comes out to tell him that they need to admit her, so she asks him to do several things when he returns home, but he is simply more worried. When the protagonist returns home, Suna and Yamato arrive to help him with chores and cooking. The next day after classes, Takio visits his mother, but even though she tells him she's okay, he remains uneasy. When he goes out to get water, his friend and girlfriend arrive to visit his mother. When they go to see her, the woman is in pain, so she asks them to call the nurse because she is about to give birth. But seeing that they don't have anything to transport her in, Takio lifts her and says he will take her, surprising his mother as the boy doesn't stop talking to the new family member on the way. Before entering the delivery room, the woman grabs her amulet and says everything will be fine. A few minutes later, the boys hear the baby crying and a nurse comes out to congratulate Takio on being a father of a girl. However, he never clarified that it was his sister. But he didn't care as he was happy that his sister named Maki was born healthy. Later, Takio's mother tells her husband that she was surprised to see her son when he lifted her as she couldn't believe how much her son had grown as she always saw him as a little boy. It's a new day and several days have passed since Maki's birth and her older brother can't stop being with her to tell her things that happen. This time he tells her that Valentine's Day is coming and as always he thinks he won't receive chocolates since no girl liked him so he doesn't expect anything again. In the afternoon, when the protagonist goes to school, Suma asks him what kind of chocolate he expects Yamato to give him. So Takio gets excited because this year he might receive chocolate since he has a girlfriend, but he says he'll try to appear unconcerned. Then he remembers that he'll probably get a second kiss and gets excited again. Meanwhile, Nanako asks Yamato for help to prepare chocolate for her boyfriend, so she proposes to cook together since she also has to prepare something for Takio. When the protagonist is in the classroom, his friends approach him to ask if they can have a group date with Rinko's friends since they don't have partners and don't want to spend the day alone. Suna interrupts the request to tell them they should leave his friend alone since he couldn't spend Christmas alone with his girlfriend. But Takio doesn't mind as he sends a message to Yamato, and after a while, she tells him that her friends accepted the invitation. So the boys get excited and celebrate as they have a date for Valentine's Day. The next day, before the girls prepare cookies, Yamato begins to find out what kind of chocolate she should prepare for her boyfriend. It's Valentine's Day and the boys enter the school and when they arrive, Sonako's locker is filled with chocolate, so the protagonist remembers that his friend has been receiving chocolate since school, but despite that, he never accepted to go out with anyone because they all talked badly about him. However, once Suna received an anonymous chocolate asking him to notice her. That afternoon, the boys meet with Yamato's friends at a restaurant and while they are there, the protagonist tries to remain calm all the time. But Rinko gets up to hand out the cookies they prepare for everyone. However, when she's handing them to Suna, one of the boys gets up and stops her, proposing that each girl gives the cookies, so they feel that they personally received chocolates from a girl. After doing it, the boys feel happy as they receive chocolates on Valentine's Day for the first time. When the group date ends, Keikyo tries to accompany his girlfriend home, but she says she's in a hurry. So she leaves alone and says goodbye quickly, leaving the young man disappointed. When he returns home, the protagonist visits his sister again and tells her again that his girlfriend didn't give him chocolates and even though she always gives him sweets, this time he was looking forward to it. But when he remembers the day, he realizes that Yamato gave him some chocolate cookies, so he supposes that was the gift. But she made identical cookies for everyone, so that no one feels different. So he leaves the room to go buy some chocolates for his girlfriend, but when he opens the door of his house, he finds Yamato about to ring the doorbell. She gives her Valentine's chocolate to Takio, and the young man is surprised by the huge box she gives him. 
She says she has been preparing it for a long time as she had complications in the preparation, but luckily, she managed to finish it on time. After she says goodbye, the protagonist gets excited and goes out to the balcony to shout with joy to Yamato as he was grateful, but he also blows her a huge kiss that she happily catches. The next day, the friends return to classes, and Seju was waiting for them to give them their chocolates since she waited until the next day. Suna tells his friend that the girls who fell in love with him are good people, but as they leave, a shy student is watching them. After several days, it's white day and the protagonist has prepared cookies for his girlfriend for the first time. However, when he gives them to her, he gets nervous because, according to him, they burned and didn't turn out well. Nonetheless, Yamato is so happy that she says she can't eat them because they're too precious. Still, she tries one and is fascinated by how delicious they are. The next day, the protagonist and his friend head to class and Takeo thanks him for helping with the cookies. However, he stops suddenly as he feels a presence asking Suna to leave. Later, he finds a hidden student who was observing them. She gets scared and tries to leave, but Takeo follows her. However, she trips and her letter falls into the water. The young man jumps to rescue it and reads the same content as the anonymous letters his friend has been receiving. She then reveals her name as Yukika Amami, and he may not remember her, but they've been classmates since preschool. The young man tries to remember, and after some thinking, he recalls her. They go to talk in the park where she feels very shy and can't speak much, while he doesn't know what to ask her without making her feel uncomfortable. However, she confesses that she's been in love with Suna for 10 years because he was always a different child from the others. But it all started when he saved her during a sports game by protecting her from a ball hitting her. She approached to apologize, but he confessed he did it to prevent her from getting hurt, and she was impressed since then. However, that was the only time they talked and she spent her time observing them. She feels relieved when he rejected the girls during his time and she's happy to see Takio happy with Yamato since it's hard to find someone with those feelings. She admits to inviting him since he can spend time with Suna. Still, at this Valentine's Day, she planned to deliver the letter personally, but she couldn't do it since he became her ideal over time. The protagonist is surprised by what she reveals, and they are both surprised by Sunakoa's sudden appearance. When Tekio turns around, he notices that Yukika is no longer there, so the boys return home. The next day at school, Yukika asks Takio for help to talk to Suna and have a normal conversation because she doesn't have the courage to confess, but at least wants to be valued by him. So they devise a plan. That afternoon, they both wait for Suna to come out of the store, and the protagonist tells the story of how Yukika helped him. To their surprise, Sanakoa recognizes the girl since they've been classmates since childhood. But she can't bear any more and ends up quoting what all those letters she gave him said. Taikyo and Suna are surprised, but she simply runs away, followed by the protagonist who catches up to her. He tells her that that wasn't part of the plan, but encourages her to convey her feelings to him. When they return, they see that Suna hasn't left, so he approaches the girl and asks her if she's the owner of all the letters he has received for a long time. She gets nervous and asks him to try to get to know her before rejecting her, so he agrees and they exchange numbers to stay in touch. The next day, Takeo feels the girl's presence all the time, so he reaches a point where he can't take it anymore and asks Suna to wait. At that moment, he goes to look for Yukika and tells his friend to go home with her. Takeo follows them from afar and when they say goodbye, he intercepts Yukika since she missed her chance by not talking to Sunakawa. In the meantime, Yamato calls her boyfriend and he tells her what's going on, so they both try to help her talk to her crush. They come up with the idea of planning a double date. The young man immediately visits his friend to talk about the date, and he tells him that he should do what he feels and not feel pressured. However, Suna confesses that he wants to go on that date. After what happened, Yukika sends a message to Yamato asking for help to buy clothes for the date. The young woman rushes to see her, but Amami doesn't know what to buy because she doesn't know Sonakawa's tastes. However, Rinko sends a message to her boyfriend to ask, but he only says she should wear the school uniform. On the day of the date, Yukika arrives looking very pretty to surprise her beloved, but she freezes upon seeing him, while the boys wait for her to say something. At the zoo, Yukika tells the couple she chose that place because in preschool, Suna had a question about giraffes, and she was the only one who knew the answer. However, she never managed to answer him because she was shy. The group spends the day at the zoo comparing themselves to animals until they reach a store. The couple asks Yukika to talk with Suna, so she gradually approaches him and engages in a small conversation. She returns happy and blushing because she managed to do it. At that moment, they hear about a question competition and decide to participate. To their surprise, the competition is in pairs, so Suna takes Yukika's hand. During the competition, Yukika surprises everyone by correctly answering all the questions, winning the competition. When the date ends, Suna goes home, but before leaving, he tells the girl he had fun like never before. Yukika gets emotional because for the first time, she could talk to him about trivial things. She also saw him smile which was what she wished for since she always wanted to be like that with him. 
Takia realizes that despite sounding absurd, those are the happiest moments. The next morning, the protagonist sees Yukika talking to Suna and is happy because she finally managed to talk to him. However, when his friend leaves, he sees the girl crying, so Takio takes her to a private place to talk. She says that Suna went to the date out of kindness because he doesn't despise her, but he doesn't like her either. Thus, they don't share the same feelings, leaving her heartbroken and she regrets confessing. Nonetheless, she thanks Takio and his girlfriend for their help. Takio tries to stop her, but she simply leaves. When the friends go home, Yamada rushes to inform Takio that Yukika sent her a farewell message. With a heavy heart, Takio tells them that the girl said Suna's kindness is painful, and she's heartbroken because they have different feelings, so she decided to give up. Suna overhears this, but decides to leave for the bookstore. The protagonist also asks his girlfriend if it was better that Yukika didn't confess, but she says she did the right thing because otherwise, she wouldn't have good memories with Suna. The next day, Takio feels Yukika's presence when he's walking with his friend, so he later finds her. She starts running, but Takio chases her and informs Yamato that he found her. They reach the women's restroom in the park, and the protagonist tells her she doesn't have to disappear from their lives, and Suna's kindness doesn't mean it's over, it's just the beginning. He also mentions that Suna remembers the first letter she wrote to him, and it would be a shame if things ended like this. At that moment, Yamato appears, and a policeman arrives because Takio seems suspicious standing outside the women's restroom. Yukika steps out to clarify things, and she receives a call from Sunakawa. She gets very nervous but answers anyway. He asks her to meet, so she rushes off while the couple encourages her, saying they'll be waiting for her. When Yukika arrives, Suna gives her a gift and tells her he always wanted to thank her and for all the years she gave him chocolates. The girl asks if they can be friends and keep talking, to which he agrees. When she returns to the couple, she tells them what happened, but she's happy because she had fun with them and Suna and could create fun memories. For a moment, their worlds connected and she could confess what she felt in her letters because she didn't need anything in return, just to like her. However, she realizes it's complicated, but she wishes Suna finds a good girlfriend. Later, Yamada decides to accompany the girl home, leaving Takio pondering that what she said is true because when you love someone, you don't want anything in return. After several days, the holidays begin and Yamato starts her first day of work at a bakery. However, Takio is outside, observing like a suspicious person. But according to him, he just wants to be prepared in case something happens to his girlfriend. She got the job because the guys encouraged her to apply for the job offer. She tells him that they should visit her once she feels accustomed because she won't be nervous. On the next work day, the young woman watches through the window as the pastry chef prepares something, so she approaches him and introduces herself. He is Ichinos, the right-hand man of the boss, and he tells her to ask him if she has any doubts because he will guide her. She tells him she wants to be a pastry chef. Later, he tries to tell her that she should make more effort because she wasn't greeting the customers properly, which would scare them away. Upon hearing that, Yamato feels overwhelmed, and Takio notices this when he sees her, but she still says she will try harder. The next morning, the co-worker tells Yamato that she shouldn't take what Ichinos says seriously because he's always in his own world since he's a lonely person. Later, Yamato finds some pastries in the kitchen, and to her surprise, Ichinos appears because he made them. He asks her to try one and she's fascinated and recommends selling them, but he refuses because he doesn't like seeing people not buying his desserts. She says that if they don't sell, she will buy the leftovers, which astonishes him, but he ends up accepting. She says goodbye, but eagerly awaits the next day. After the deal they made, Yamato makes an effort to sell the pastries, which she succeeds in doing. Meanwhile, the protagonist is outside the bakery, observing again, but this time he can see the employee calling his girlfriend by her name, something he never did, which makes him jealous and wonder who the guy is. Later, Echinos prepares ice cream desserts for all the employees, which surprises the girls when they find out he made them. However, he only thinks about Yamato and possibly having feelings for her, because not only did she offer to sell his pastries, but she also pleases him. When Rinka leaves, she takes the remaining pastries to her boyfriend and Suna. Takeo wonders what happened between them because last time she was sad, but now she's happy, and he starts regretting telling her to work, but still, he wishes her luck. The next afternoon, Takeo goes to the seaside to tell Suna he feels small, so his friend responds that it's normal to feel overwhelmed when you see your girlfriend surrounded by other guys, but you shouldn't worry because they've only known each other for a week, and you can't fall in love immediately. Takeo starts feeling better, but he receives a message from his girlfriend asking him to adopt the job so they can visit her. When the guys arrive, Takeo behaves strangely because he's nervous, but Sanakawa notices Ichinos behind the window, observing Yamato, but he doesn't say anything. When the guys leave the store, the pastry chef asks who the guys were, so upon learning that the tallest one was her boyfriend, Ichinos rushes after them and stops Takeo, asking him harshly to break up with Rinko because he says he is the best candidate for her since they have similar tastes. 
He also asks why he's dating her. Stoptakio tells him about the rescue when they met. Then the pastry chef proposes finding someone more suitable for him, like a gorilla or a bear, because they might understand each other. When the protagonist refuses to break up with his girlfriend, the pastry chef proposes to prove who is more suitable of the two because he won't let him take her. When Ichinos leaves, Takio starts to think that maybe he's right. When Suda returns home, he meets his older sister and tells her that Yamato is working at a bakery and that Takio feels inferior because of what happened. Meanwhile, the protagonist is in his room with his sister. And when her mother comes in, she realizes there's a storm, so she remembers that his girlfriend is still working. However, Yamato gets into Ichinos' car and the boy proposes to help him in the competition he will apply for, which she accepts. Before reaching the store, Takio can see Yamato leaving with Ichinos in his car, leaving him to in the rain. Upon returning after the protagonist saw his girlfriend with Ichinos, he says he's happy for her. But at that moment, she calls him and says she saw him on the way, but he still denies it. Nevertheless, the young woman proposes going for a walk since they haven't seen each other for a long time, so he accepts. The next day, the pastry chef asks Yamato to help him with his tarts, and because of this, the girl calls her boyfriend, who is excited about the outing and trying to decide where to go. But she decides to cancel their outing because she tells him about her co-worker's competition. However, he accepts because he thinks he should help him. In the evening, the guys go bowling, and after finishing, everyone wonders why Yamato didn't come, so they see Takio rest, and he asks them if it's okay for Rinko to go out with him because there are better guys. Nanako gets upset and tells him he's wrong because he's the right one for her friend since she chose him. The protagonist realizes he doesn't want them to take her away, so he runs to look for Ichinos, and when he arrives at the store, the pastry chef challenges him to prove who is the best, so he tells him that when he wins the competition, he will tell Yamato how he feels. The next day, Takio watches the pastry chef and Yamato since they were alone after work, but Ichinos realizes it, so he goes to confront him. Confessing that everything changed for him since she arrived, so they are destined to be together, and he will ask her to be his muse. The young man wishes him luck and leaves the place. When the pastry chef returns with Yamato, he confesses to her that he used to be a lone wolf, but everything changed when she arrived and thanks to her, he remembered the feeling of preparing a dessert and making people smile. So he asks her to be his muse, but she doesn't accept his request because according to her boyfriend, muses are plastic. Despite not feeling bad about the response, this gives him an idea, so he asks the girl to leave since she had to work. But before leaving, he confesses that on the day of the competition, he will make a request to her. The day of the competition arrives, and before leaving, Yamato first visits her boyfriend. There, she tells him that Aichinos told her he would ask her for something, so she can't relax because she thinks he will ask her to work full-time, but she doesn't know what to answer. Takeo thinks he was the fool, but his girlfriend is no less, so he calms her down because he realizes she feels pressured and tells her that maybe he will ask her to help only when she needs it. She thanks him because she feels better every time she talks to him, and before leaving, Takeo hugs her because he doesn't want to lose her. Later, the protagonist is with his friend, but Suna laughs at him because it's the first time he sees him in this facet where he feels inferior to someone because he's a strong and intimidating person, but then he tells him not to worry because Yamato loves him. Meanwhile, Yamato is at the competition with Ichinos, who then realizes that he doesn't have the utensils because he was more worried about the ingredients. The young man starts to panic, but Yamato tries to calm him down and says she knows someone who can bring them, so she calls Takio, who without hesitation helps him, and the pastry chef can't believe what he was about to do. After a while, the protagonist arrives just in time after running with all his energy and wishes his opponent luck. Ichinos asks him to stay because he helped him and during the competition, the pastry chef can't stop thinking about what the young man did because after he told him he would confess to his girlfriend, he decided to help him, so he realizes he's a good guy. The competition ends and Ichinos is the winner, so he dedicates the medal to Yamato. The pastry chef declares his love to the girl in front of Takio and Suna, but she rejects him because since they met, her heart only belongs to Takio. The protagonist gets excited and realizes he worried for nothing because his feelings are reciprocated. Later, Yamato tells her boyfriend that she didn't know about Ichinos' feelings, but she also doesn't know what he feels for her. So Takio hugs her and confesses that he was afraid of losing her. But after calling her by her name, he gets nervous and promises her that next time he will act more naturally. Maybe.